Ms. Lauren. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for this beautiful day. Thank you, Lord. Oh, let's just lift our hands. Let's just lift our hands to the Father. Lord, we just lift our hands up to you. Father, we love you. We just worship you. We love you, Father. We love you, Father. We love you, Father. Oh, you're such a wonderful Father. Heavenly Father, you are holy. You are holy. You are holy. We adore you. We worship you. And we thank you today, Heavenly Father. And we just come and we pray today in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your wonderful name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. And we thank you, Jesus. We just thank you today. We give you praise and honor and glory. We just thank you. We thank you. We thank you for who you are. And we thank you for all that you do, Jesus. Amen and amen. <laughs> It's just so wonderful to be able to talk about our Heavenly Father and to talk about Jesus, isn't it? Just when you talk about our Heavenly Father, I believe that he draws close to us because he likes when people gather together and talk about him. So we just love to talk about our Heavenly Father and how big he is to think that he made the universe and yet he still loves us, <laughs> and we can have a relationship with him. It's so wonderful. And a lot of people growing up didn't have a real good relationship with their father, and so sometimes they have a hard time relating to the Heavenly Father because then they think they can have a relationship. And lots of times people... Uh, might have been abused by their father and so they have a hard time picturing a heavenly father that's full of love but jesus came to die, die on the cross and to change all that that we could see who the heavenly father really is and that no matter who we are no matter where we are we can have a relationship with the father and we can call him father and we can call upon him and know that he loves us. It's wonderful to know the love of the, the Heavenly Father, isn't it? To know his love. It, there's nothing else like it in the world. People are looking for love everywhere, but there's nothing like the love of our Heavenly Father. And we just want to experience that today. And... Um, and lift up the name of Jesus. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. So we just lift up the name of Jesus all throughout Pennsylvania and all throughout the United States and all throughout the world that people everywhere would be drawn to the name of Jesus because there's such power in his name. And to think that he went to the cross, he went up Calvary's hill, for each and every one and he said whosoever would call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved and we know that we're living in the last days and that time is short for some people it's shorter than for other people time is short and there's all kinds of signs everywhere Jesus said there would be signs of his return and there are signs everywhere there are signs in the sky there are signs everywhere that the return of the Lord is very close. But as we think of the return of the Lord, we can also think that he said, whosoever would call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So as we get closer to the coming of the Lord, we're calling people into his kingdom because he doesn't want anyone to be lost. He wants everyone to be saved. So we're calling people in today. We're calling people in today. We're here today to pray and to lift up the name of Jesus 
that people would come into his kingdom before the rapture, before the church is taken out. Because once the rapture takes place and the born-again Christians are taken out, then it's going to be too late. And anybody that wasn't taken up in the rapture will be left behind. So we're praying today that people everywhere would call upon that wonderful name, no other name like that wonderful name of Jesus, and be saved today. And we thank God for the Holy Spirit and the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is everywhere. And God poured out the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost that we could have, be filled with the Holy Spirit and with power. And the Holy Spirit is right here with us today, empowering us and empowering everyone that receives him. And so we thank you, Father. We thank you for sending the Holy Spirit. We're thankful that the Holy Spirit is here. And Jesus once described in the book of John, the Holy Spirit, he said, the Holy Spirit is like the wind. You see things blowing around, and you see the results of the wind, but you really can't see the wind itself. <laughs> the wind is invisible, and that's how the Holy Spirit is. We see the results of the Holy Spirit, but he's invisible. And so he can do mighty, mighty things, and we can see those manifestations and those results. So I thank God for his word. I'm here today to preach the word of God and to proclaim his word. I'm thankful for the word of God because it's quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. So the word of God is our sword. And we can take that sword and we can go out and we can cut this way, we can cut this way, and we can cut this way. And it has two sides to it. And everywhere you go, the word will cut into hearts and cut away things that don't belong there and cut through things. And so aren't you thankful that we have the word of God to be our powerful sword? And also to give us the faith of God because the Lord said faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I'm thankful that we have the word of God and that we can lift up the two-edged sword today. Wow. <laughs> Woo, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Sometimes you come like the wind, and sometimes you come like a dove. And we can just breathe in the life of God today. So just take a deep breath, everyone. Take in a deep breath and breathe in the Holy Spirit. Breathe in the life of God. He came that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. So I'm just breathing that in, breathing in the life, the abundant life. It doesn't matter uh, how we feel. We don't go on feelings. We go by faith in the living God. And uh, that brings us joy and peace, doesn't it? This brings us joy and peace today. Thank you, Lord. Well, the Lord uh, put it on my heart today. What he wanted to say, talk to us about today is faith and obedience. So none of us really have faith. It's his faith. It's just like everything else. <laughs> we don't have peace. We need his peace. We don't have joy, so we need his joy. None of us really have love. People think they, they can love, but we don't have love. We need God's love, and it's the same way with faith. None of us really have faith, so we need his faith <laughs> so I believe that's what he wants to encourage us in today is about his faith and just taking hold of his faith and bringing his faith into our hearts and our spirits to help us so since faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God I, I love to read the word of God ever since I first got saved the word of God became my friend and I believe that when you take the word of God, it is by faith. When you read the word of God, it is by faith because 
the average person, when they open up and they read the Bible, it's like they don't understand it. They don't know anything about it. We just do it by faith that it's God's word and that it's powerful. And so when we open up the word of God, we do it by faith. We read it by faith. And we receive everything it says by faith. And so in saying that, I want to look at Hebrews chapter 11. And we call this the faith chapter. Lots of times it's known as the faith chapter. <laughs> but it doesn't, did you ever notice, it doesn't matter where you read the Bible, where you read in the Bible, wherever you open it up. It will speak to you. It's alive. The Word of God is alive. It's the living Word of God. And every day is a different day. So every day we need the Word of God. Every day is a new day. Every day God's going to do something different in our lives and all around us. So the Word of God is fresh and it's new. And that's why... It's important to read the Word of God every day. And when we read the Word of God, it's going to say something new to us every day. It's going to be living. It's going to be living to us every day. And you might read a scripture that you read two years ago, but you can read it today, and it might be something new and powerful you know why? Because today you're going through something different, and today you're thinking different. And as we mature in the Lord, that's another thing. As we mature in the Lord, we understand more and more as we read the Word. So I'm just going to proclaim today Hebrews chapter 11. And if you have your Bible, you can read along, but... The Lord told me to proclaim this chapter, and so that's what I'm going to do, <laughs> to proclaim it. It's Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whether he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have not opportunity to have returned. 
but now they have desire a better country that is a heavenly wherewith God is not ashamed to be called their God for he hath prepared for them a city by faith Abraham when he was tried offered up Isaac and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead from whence also he received him in a figure by faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come by faith Jacob when he was a dying blessed both the sons of Joseph and worship leaning upon the top of his staff by faith Joseph when he had died made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones by faith Moses when he was born was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment by faith Moses when he was come to years refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward by faith he forsook Egypt not fearing the wrath of the king for he endured as seeing him who is invisible through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them by faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land which the Egyptians assigned to do were drowned by faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days by faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believe not when she had received the spies with peace and what shall I more say for the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and Jephthah of David also and Samuel and of the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness obtained promises stopped the mouths of lions quenched the violence of fire caped the edge of the sword out of weakness were made strong waxed valiant in fight turned to fight the armies of the aliens women received their dead raised to life again and others were tortured not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection and others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings yea moreover of bonds and imprisonment they were stoned they were sawn asunder they were tempted were slain with the sword they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins being destitute afflicted and tormented of whom the world was not worthy they wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth and these all having obtained a good report through faith received not the promise God having provided some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect Wow so these are people of faith this is the faith chapter and even as we read this and as we proclaim this today God is putting his faith into us to anybody that will receive it today faith just like these people had that we read about in this chapter God is putting that same faith that was his faith he put into their hearts that they could believe they could believe for the impossible even when they didn't see the results they did it out of obedience now how can you explain something like that it has to be God's faith it could, couldn't be human faith because human faith don't work that way human faith gives up you know our humanness we want to give up God might give us a promise he might tell us to do something but in our human strength and our mind we can't go through with it we get weary we get tired we get doubtful we start worrying and we want to give up that's our humanness but when we have the faith of God it's different and so we have to turn up to our Heavenly Father and we have to ask him for his faith and receive his faith and we receive the same faith that these great people had to go through anything and it says 
that they had faith to do these things that God called them to do, and yet they didn't see the end result. They didn't see the promise. We see it. They did it for us today, that we could know Jesus, that we could have a relationship with God, that we could know about heaven, that we could have faith today, that we could live and do the works of God. It's because of these great, these people here, they weren't great people, but they had the great faith of God. And it's amazing because they did it for us. And now they, they went on to heaven and on to glory, but we get to enjoy all that they dreamed of, all that they dreamed of. They did it. They dreamed of all these great things, and God promised them great things. And so they did it by faith. They went out by faith. They were obedient. They were obedient, even though they didn't see answers, even though they couldn't see God's face, they couldn't always see God's hand, but they knew in their hearts, God put faith in their hearts, what to do. And so they did it all by faith, and many of them suffered. Many of them were persecuted. Many of them were lonely. Many of them were tried. Many of them died young and were tortured, and they went through all kinds of things. Why? Because they had the faith of God to go through it. They w went through all these things because they had God's faith, in it. and so it is with us today. Maybe there's a lot of people, you know, here today or watching today that are going through terrible, terrible circumstances, and you're being persecuted on every side. You're being persecuted. You're being tested. You're being tried. But yet God told you to do something, and he put it within your heart. And so that's how you're going to make it, by God's faith. Not by your own faith, but by God's faith. If he gave you a dream, he gave you a vision, he gave you a promise, all you have to do is obey him, take hold of his faith, and go forward day by day, step by step. And keep your eyes on God and keep your hand in his hand. And it's going to come to pass. You know, many times people have dreams and visions and it doesn't happen in their generation what they dreamed of. But it happens in the next generation. There's a lot of parents, you know, they had dreams for their children. And they prayed and they cried and they cried out for their children. They cried out for their grandchildren. And they died and they never saw their children or grandchildren saved or go on with the Lord. And yet after they died, their children came to the Lord and their children and their grandchildren got filled with the Holy Spirit and became preachers and became evangelists. But they didn't see it in their time. That takes faith. And so God wants to encourage us today that whatever he puts within our hearts, to keep our hand in his hand and to keep our eyes on him and to use his faith for that vision and for that dream because it is going to come to pass because he said it. And God does not lie and whatever God says is going to come to pass. And he gives everybody a different dream, a different goal, a different vision. And so we can't get sidetracked either. These people didn't get sidetracked, Abraham and and Isaac and Jacob. They didn't get sidetracked on what this person was doing and what that person was doing. They went on what God told them when God visited them, when God spoke into their heart and in their spirit. They hung on to that, and that's what God wants to encourage us today. Don't get sidetracked on what someone else's vision is or someone else's dream is. But to stay focused on the dream and the vision that the Lord has given to us. And sometimes it's easy to get discouraged and think, well, maybe I should be doing what that person's doing, or maybe I should be doing what that per person is doing. It seems like what I'm doing isn't getting any results, and I'm not really seeing anything fulfilled. But that's when it takes God's faith to stay with it. It takes God's faith to say, Lord, I know you gave me this dream. I know you gave me this vision, and I'm not going to quit, and I'm not going to give up because I believe that all your pr promises 
or yea and amen to those that believe. So we look at all these, these people of faith and it encourages us just reading this and just reading about them and reading God's word encourages us. And every day when we get up, if we go to the word of God and we take a hold of his promises, it's going to help to get us through because it's a day-by-day -day thing. And sometimes people have a goal, a dream, and a vision, and they get way ahead of God. <laughs> we can get way ahead of God because we want to get there so fast. We want that goal and that dream to just be accomplished today so we don't have to go through all this or that. But, you know, sometimes it takes a while because God has to put things into place. He has to put people into place. And so in order not to give up and in order not to get weary and in order not to get off track, we got to stay in the word of God every day because it's our light and it's our compass. And it will help to keep us on track so that we do reach our goal and we do reach our destiny, what God has for us. One of these people in the faith chapter is Noah and when you think about Noah and the faith that Noah had it encourages us too doesn't it and when you read about Noah in Genesis uh, it's in Genesis chapter 6 7 8 and 9 and you read about how God put it within Noah's heart to build an ark and he spoke to Noah and so he also put his faith in Noah's heart if God wouldn't have put his faith into Noah's heart, Noah never could have done what he did because that was a big step of faith because no one believed that Noah knew what he was talking about. Nobody believed that Noah knew what he was doing. Here he was going out with his sons and gathering up all this gopher wood. It was special wood. It had to be special wood because they were going to be in deep water and it took a long time to put that ark together. And he put it together just the way God told him to do. That was total obedience to God. And it was a day-by-day -day thing. It wasn't like one day him and his sons got up and just put that whole boat together. No, it was a day-by-day -day thing. They worked on it bit by bit, day by day, just obeying God. And I believe Noah walked so close to God that he would start out every day just praying, just looking to God, just worshiping the Heavenly Father. And when he did that, I believe the Father put that faith into him and gave him the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding and the skill how to put that ark together. And he, I just believe that he would sit before the Lord and, and, you know, if we just sit before the Lord sometimes in quietness, he will speak and his faith will come into our hearts. And he'll give us wisdom and knowledge and understanding how to do things. If we're willing to take the time, just like you're here today, you're doing it by faith and obedience. <laughs> Total faith is why you're here or why people are watching. But as we do that, and we do it out of faith, God will put his wisdom and knowledge and understanding into our hearts. And we can take a journal, we can take a notebook or something and while we're waiting on God and he'll speak to us. And we can even write down what he's saying because he'll speak that clear to us that we can even write it down in a notebook. And if we get a little weary and we feel like we don't have God's faith working one day, we can go back. And we can read what he told us, and it will encourage us, and it will keep us on track and keep building up that faith. And I believe that's what Noah did. I believe that he was a man of faith, and he went before the Lord day by day. I think it was a day-by-day day thing. And each day as he went before the Lord, the Lord would give him instructions. Use this kind of wood. Build it this way. It has to be this high. It has to be this long and put this compartment here and put this compartment here and i believe day by day the lord gave him instructions how to build that ark and maybe he wasn't even totally maybe he couldn't even totally comprehend what it was all about the this flood coming and why he needed this big ark and 
why he had to have all these compartments. And I'm sure it wasn't totally clear, and in his human mind, he couldn't figure it all out. But day by day, I believe that he sat before the Lord, and he looked to the Lord, and the Lord would give him instructions, and then the Lord would say, now I want you to go out, and I want you to bring in animals, two by two, male and female. <laughs> Can you imagine one day God giving him that instruction? Well, how in your human mind do you ever explain something like that or think that you could go out and get animals and make them listen to you two by two to walk into a boat? I mean, that would take God's faith in your heart to do that. And Noah did. He had God's faith in him and his sons. They went out, and the animals came. You know why? Because Noah was obedient, and he used the faith of God. And that was an impossible thing to even think about, going out into the mountains, thinking that you're going to find every animal that God ever created, and they're going to come two by two into this boat that God told you to make. Well, he did it by faith. Just total obedience to God went up into the mountains. And wouldn't that be, put a smile on your face and bring you joy? You do this by faith and you're going up in the mountains and here comes, here comes two lions, a male and a female, two by two towards you. Huh. You take, put them in the boat. Then you go out into the wilderness. Oh, here comes two big elephants, a male and a female, right up to you, <laughs> two by two. Wow. Oh, uh, it's just amazing what that must have been like. I mean, the big you think of the big animals, and then you think of all the little animals and all the creeping things, and then you think of all the birds. I mean, he's out there, Noah, just obeying God by faith. Two beautiful parrots probably come, one on one shoulder, one on the other shoulder, a male and a female. Oh, there they are. <laughs> you brought them, God. I mean, that must have been so amazing. Can you imagine what was going through the mind and the heart of his sons working with him, seeing all this? They know, oh, Dad has a dream and a vision from God, and God put that faith in his heart. And then they see it coming to pass. They see their dad out there and all these animals coming two by two. And they're taking them and they're putting them, putting them into the ark. And then they go, well, now I know why God told me to make this compartment and this compartment and this compartment. Now I know why God wanted this up here. Now I know why God wanted this down here. So it was all coming to pass. That must have been so exciting to see that. And yet, all the people that knew them, their neighbors, their relatives, and everyone around them laughed them to scorn and thought they were cuckoo, thought they were crazy. I guess it would look crazy to the human mind. Because at that time, it never rained on the earth. It was just water came up every morning and evening the water would come up out of the ground and water everything but it never rained <laughs> and so Noah's telling them just what God told him there's going to be a flood it's going to cover the whole earth and that's why we're making this boat and we're taking all these animals in here and you got to get right with God and come in this ark or you're all going to be killed, you're all going to be drowned. And that's hard to comprehend, too, that even though God gave him this vision and this dream, and he was warning people and telling people, no one listened. No one came in the ark except his family. Because it, was, it seemed too weird, it seemed too strange. So if God gives us something to do and everybody around us is making fun of us and everybody around us can't see the vision, they can't see the dream, and they're going, you're cuckoo, you're crazy. <laughs> it's like they don't appreciate the vision from God and yet you're doing, God's doing it to reach out to them, to help them, to save them, but they're going, 
You're crazy. That's never going to happen. You're a fanatic. You went off the deep end. Get away from me. <laughs> and yet, it did happen. And one day, the rains came, and it started raining, and the rain was pouring down, and it was getting deeper and deeper. And you would think at that time, people would start to believe. Here was the ark. Noah was in there with his family, and here were the animals, and it was raining. You think people still did not believe. That's amazing, isn't it? They still did not get in the ark of safety. And then they just started washing away, and then when it got that deep, they were probably trying to swim to the ark and crying out and saying, let us in, let us in, but the door had already shut the door shut because there came a time God gave them a time and it says that God's spirit does not always strive with man there was a time there was a limit there was a day the door was going to be shut and it was shut and no one could get in after that and so I believe that God wants to encourage us today that Sometimes we might get a little weary and we might get a little discouraged because we want people to repent and they, we want them to come to the cross and we want them to get saved. But th they think that we went off the deep end, that we're fanatic talking about the rapture. You know, that one day Jesus, the trumpet's going to sound and God's people are going to be raptured. And, and even people in the churches today, they think you're crazy. They think that's never going to happen. And then a lot of people that have been taught that over the years think it's, well, that's way off. That's way off somewhere. That's, but the Bible says to be ready every day. We don't know when it's going to be. We have to be ready every day. And so this is going out, you know, as a warning over TV, over the radio, through preachers, through evangelists, every day calling people, come to the cross, come to Jesus and be saved. But so many people, you know, they turn it off. They, they don't listen. But one day it is going to happen, just like with Noah. And the door was closed, and then no one could get in. And one day it's going to happen. And we have to continue by faith. To proclaim it, because that's what God told us to do by his faith. To proclaim the gospel and call people, come, come before it's too late. Today is the day of salvation. So today is still a day that someone can get saved. The door has not been shut yet. The rapture didn't take place yet. Today, just call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. So when you think about it, why should we ever doubt God? Why should we ever worry? Why should we ever complain? Because he's such a big God. He, he can do anything. He can do, there's nothing too difficult for God. When we read the word of God, we see through Hebrews chapter 11, all the things that he did through just simple human beings like us simple humble people he did great things just because they had faith and they obeyed and they obeyed God so he's saying to us today to only believe all things are possible if we believe but he wants us to believe and that's the key word is to believe because if we believe all things are possible so the Lord wants to give you a miracle today. He wants to give you a miracle, and you a miracle, and you a miracle. He wants to give you a miracle. What miracle do you need from God today? God wants to give you a miracle, and all you have to do is believe. Just believe. He put things within your heart, and he put things within people's hearts, and he wants to encourage people to believe and to believe for that miracle. He said that we should make our requests known to him. And so he wants us to request. What is the request that you have today? What is the request that you have to come before God today? And he, we don't have to beg God. 
We don't have to beg. He's our father. We're his children. Just come and make the request and then believe. That's what he said. And he said that, that we should come boldly. That's amazing. It's hard in our human minds to comprehend that thought, too. That God is the God of the universe, and he sits on the throne of heaven. But we, through the blood of Jesus, can come boldly to his throne. And he says, what do you need today? What is the miracle that you want today? And he's just more than willing to give it to us. He just wants us to have faith and to believe. I know there's people today that are believing for miracles. You need desperately for God's help. You need desperately for a breakthrough. You need desperately to see things turn around or for a healing or for a change. And God's saying to come boldly. He said that he would supply all of our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So God is rich. He wants to supply our needs, whatever we need. What do you need today? What do you need? God's supply house is big and it's full. And he just wants us to believe and to, to get our miracle today. And he said that we should seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things would be added on to us. So that's the key also to faith is to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness to seek him first so many times people they'll go to somebody else or they'll go to something else before they'll go to God but he sees that faith and obedience in us when we seek him first when we get up instead of checking everything else out in the world we go to the word of God and we go to the Lord and we seek him first, he's going to give us our miracle. He's going to strengthen our f that faith that he put in us. He's going to build that faith up when, when we put him first. So I believe the Lord is just encouraging us today to seek him first and to receive our miracle. So let's just stand. Let's just stand in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for your Holy Spirit. We just receive your Holy Spirit promise now to build up that faith that you put within us for the impossible. We come boldly before your throne, Father. We come boldly before your throne, and we believe that all things are possible with you. We come boldly before your throne, and we expect a miracle today. We expect a miracle today, and we give you praise and honor and glory because you're the miracle worker. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We just receive it now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, that things are turning around. Thank you, Father, that you're bringing to pass all the things that you promised. We thank you that your word is yea and amen to those that believe. So the Lord is saying to you today, why be discouraged? Why are you worried? Why are you afraid? I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to take care of you. I have a plan for your life. I know the end from the beginning. The Lord didn't bring you this far to let you down. The Lord didn't let you go through all the trials and all the tests and all the things that you went through to let you down. He has a purpose and a plan for everything that you've gone through in your life. He has a purpose and a plan. He's taking you somewhere. He's building something. So the Lord is saying today, he doesn't want you to worry. He doesn't want you to worry and be afraid. He doesn't want you to worry about your children. He doesn't want you to worry about your grandchildren. 
He doesn't want you to worry about your job and about your finances. He's saying only believe. All things are possible. Only believe. And the Lord doesn't want us to worry about our health. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. And he doesn't want us to say negative things about our bodies and about our health because we're just destroying the faith that he put within us. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. He want us, wants us to talk about him and to talk about his word and to look to him. And he will keep us in good health. He will protect us. He doesn't want us to worry. He doesn't want us to, to say anything that's not of him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, Lord, I'm just praying right now, Lord. For anybody that's listening today or watching today, Lord, we're just agreeing with them for a miracle, Lord. We're just agreeing, Lord, that they're going to receive their miracle because you released your word today and you released your faith into their hearts. There were people that were weary. There were people that were ready to give up. There were people that were afraid. But, Lord, you send out your word and you healed them. So we thank you today, Lord God, that you're giving them a miracle, that you're building up their, the faith that you put within their spirits to believe, to go on, to not to give up, to not to look at the circumstances all around or to look at other people, but to look up to you and to go on and to be strong. And we thank you, Lord, that when we put our faith and trust in you, you give us strength. It's supernatural strength to go on and to do the work that you call us to do. We thank you for that supernatural strength, and you give us courage. And you give us courage to do the things that you call us to do. We don't have to be afraid. And, Lord, I'm just asking now that you put your protection through the blood of Jesus around whoever is listening today, whoever is watching today, whoever is here today. Put the protection of your blood all around, that they are protected from harm. Protect their minds and their emotions. Protect them, Father. Protect the faith that you put within their spirits, that they can go on and do the things that you called them to do. It might seem like a big task, and other people might say that it's impossible, but, Lord, I pray that you will encourage people today, encourage them today to go on and not to give up, but to stay focused on you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I just want to pray over anybody that's here today. I just want to anoint you with oil and pray over you. I believe the Lord, the Lord wants to give you a miracle, so... I'm just going to pray over those that want prayer this morning or pray over all of you that want to come this, or this afternoon. 